this is a really smart way to not only make some money, but actually for marketing purposes. I mean, are you kidding me? If you get a big placement in one of these TV shows, if I wanted to get my music into TV and film and games, this is what I'd do. And in fact, I have gotten my music into shows that are on Lifetime and Hulu and Disney Plus, and it's pretty cool. But the other huge upside of getting sync licenses for your music is the payday that's associated with it okay so we've gone and not just for my own stuff but i'm you know i'm an entertainment attorney so i do these deals for my clients all the time and we're getting sync licenses between five thousand up to a hundred thousand dollars so it's really amazing and it's a great way to monetize that's what we are all about you're gonna make the music it's gonna be great you're gonna follow your dreams but in order to do all the things you want to do long term you have to learn how to make money from your actual music so in today's video i'm gonna teach you how how to get your music into TV, film, and games. And I'm gonna not only walk you through all the different ways that you get the licenses, but I'm also going to help you and show you where you find contact information to actually reach out, how to draft the perfect email. And then also I'm gonna give you my best, please don't do these, and some resources for some other great stuff. So if you are super excited like me, smash that like button and I'll love you forever. The first place we must start, there are four ways to get your music into TV and film and games and basically to license your music. And the first way is through stock music. So this is royalty free. All right. We think of like websites that you can go to. This would be like a Pond5, Motion Array, Audio Jingle, Jingle Punks. And so these are platforms where you can, just as yourself, get an account upload your music. It sits in a music library and you create all kinds of tags. My music sounds like this genre, you know, it fits in this kind of thing. Here are moods. So you give all the information and then your music sits on these databases. And so then Mr. Producer comes on in and Mr. Producer is like, hey, I need some music for my TV show, my movie. And so he does searches and he'll find your music that way. He buys it. Okay. And then you get paid. Now it's royalty free because you're not going to get paid beyond that. There's, no, there's not going to be royalties, but these kinds of platforms are so great if you are a producer in a couple different genres. But for example, corporate music does so good on these platforms. So, you know, when people need music for their website videos or intro songs or different things like that, this is the kind of platform that they would go to. And I have even had great ex success. So specifically with Jingle Punks, we put the instrumentals of one of my albums on this platform and it resulted in a couple of placements and one of them was was in the Olympics. It was the background music while some of the competitors were being interviewed. That was cool. I had another placement in Bad Girls Club. That was fun. So in any case, so you never know. Next one is through sync pitching libraries. So this now is where we go. We sign a deal with a music library. Music library goes and pitches your music on behalf of you. Now, obviously they're not gonna do this for free. So we just keep in mind, they're gonna take a fee, but they're negotiating for you. And what is that fee you ask? It's typically between 20 to 50%. We definitely wanna negotiate this and get you the best price, okay? And also it just depends on if they want you to do a deal exclusively or non-exclusively. So exclusively means you are only going to sign with us for these songs and no one else. And sometimes it's even you get to just sign with us for everything for a number of years. Non-exclusive usually means you give us your stuff, but you can go and work with other companies. No harm, no foul. So pay attention to little details like that. Okay. But you do have an opportunity to get not only upfront sync licensing fees, which is then split with the company you signed with, but you also might get back in royalties. One of my students, he does this full time and he made something like $200,000 last year with just the sync placements. And so this is a really smart way to not only make some money, but actually for marketing purposes. I mean, are you kidding me? If you get a big placement in one of these TV shows, people take the time to look it up and go find you on Spotify and it just helps with your general publicity. So that's a nice little upside. So that's number two. The third is gonna be by actually submitting directly to music supervisors. And I call this kind of like the guerrilla warfare uh, version, which is you yourself are doing the hard work. It's definitely a harder process to go through, okay? Because, you know, with the music libraries, they usually have relationships with these music supervisors. The music supervisors trust them, and so they're likely to give preferential treatment to them and stuff like that. Setting that all aside, you can still reach out and make friends. And so I've done this. And who's the last guy? He was the music supervisor for Lucifer. So the music you know, supervisor for Lucifer, you go, you make friends. And so what happens is that these supervisors end up jumping 
between shows. And usually they're similar and they have certain tastes and things like that. So if you make friends, like you hold all the power. And so you can just reach out and be like, hey, you know, here's some new stuff. And you just kind of keep them in the loop. And I even had clients who went and started a podcast, which was pretty smart. They started a podcast and they would ask the music supervisors to come on and be featured guests. Super smart because you make friends. Who doesn't love to be interviewed and just, you know, you're amazing. We want to know all about you. But you get an in, a foot in the door. And now you've made friends and now you have contact information. So, you know, you don't have to do all that work, but I'm just saying you can reach out directly. Ever dream of getting your music into TV, film, and games? Well, it's easier than you think. And here's what I put together for you. A music library database of 90 plus music libraries, email templates, and a license agreement all so it's done for you. Go to topmusicattorney.com for sync licensing made easy. The fourth way is that you do direct licensing deals yourself. Okay, so if you're hustling and posting your social media and you have an online presence, obviously it helps if you have a broader reach because you grow your platform, but you don't have to have it. Is your stuff on your website right now? Do you have anything noted anywhere? If I was like, oh my gosh, I love your, you know, your new song. I want to put it in my YouTube video, like just anything in my film. Can I reach out to you? Do you have contact information somewhere? Keep all these things in mind because you can directly just do these licensing deals yourselves. All right, so then category number two, where do we find the contact information? All right, I know you're super excited about this. So I've come up with a few mm, proprietary ways <laughs> that actually really work. So the first one, of course, would just like stock music libraries, just do a search. Obviously, I give you some names, but then for the pitching libraries, same thing. It is really helpful to have a list, but the good news is that you could just do a search on Google. And my thing is, make sure you take a little time to look at the type of artists and genres of music that they work in, all right? If you are just blindly emailing people, this is not going to end well for you. If someone takes the time to look at your email, we want to make sure it's a good fit, so you've done your research, they have music like you, or if they don't, maybe you fill a deficit. You're like, hey, I noticed you don't have country music. I can fill that gap, you know? So just be creative. All right, so then my best tools for finding music supervisors, obviously Google searches. You're like, what? This is insane. No, use Google search because actually you will find links to places, but more specifically, there's TuneFind. TuneFind is free, so you can discover music supervisors, okay? And it shows, you know, what shows have they worked on? It gives contact information, and you can even also search, which is kind of interesting to do. If you find artists that do music like what you do, you can also use search, or I'm sorry, TuneFind to search for those artists and to see all the shows that they've been on. And you can like reach out to those artists and be like, hey, I saw you were on this show. Do you mind if I ask who your agent is? Do you mind if I ask who, you know, what library you're working with? They usually respond. So besides TuneFind, another really good one is IMDb Pro. IMDb Pro, you do have to, you know, they have a free trial that you can try for 30 days, okay? And then I think it's like 12.50 per month thereafter, but same thing. IMD Pro, you can find contact information and names and all the things. And then another free resource that I would be behooved not to mention is just LinkedIn. So for a lot of you artists and music business owners who are not on LinkedIn, please help me sleep tonight by just going and starting a profile. The only downside to LinkedIn is that if you are a super mysterious artist and you have an artist name, it's going to force you to use your legal name, which I just, mm, not my thing, but it's fine the reach and potential from business to business, meaning like music supervisors to you is really good. You can find people, you can reach out to people. It's awesome. All right, so LinkedIn. All right, now you're so excited because you've taken the time, you have a list of who you're gonna reach out to. Again, I'll, I'll give you some additional resources, so stick around till the end of the video, but I'm drafting the perfect email. What do you say? I need brevity in what you put, meaning get to the point. And my kind of rule of thumb, when you are emailing someone, so let's pretend you're emailing me. Miss Top Music Attorney, Crystal, before you email me, please make sure any links that you have in your signature, and you should have some cool signature. Please have like your name, what do you do, what's your website, what's your socials, like have it all right there because that's like your little mini resume. Because I'm super curious, John. John emailed me, I'm gonna you know, click your Instagram. What am I gonna see? So think about that always in like your, trying to, you know, sell something, right? The sales pitch is your email. So think ahead, but then also, you know, we're going to build the email, <laughs> but just, you know, get your social media, right? Make sure just everything is on point so that if I look at your stuff, I could hear something right away. I could do something right away. All right. So anyway, then the actual email personalization is key. Hey, Crystal, I saw that you're the music supervisor for Lucifer. I replaced the other guy. It's all over for him. And I see you've also worked on these other shows. Amazing, love the music. And in fact, my music is a great fit 
for this type of show. So I just wanted to make sure to reach out and pass along some of my links. The email should be four to five sentences, okay, at most. You're gonna personalize that email. And then one of my pro tips, please do not attach anything to the email. Me as Crystal, I'm not gonna download it. There's viruses everywhere, all right? I'm just, I'm just, my skin is crawling looking at your attachment. Don't send it, but you can send a link. If you send like a Dropbox, that's okay, but it's just always think through like, do they have to like click something and wait for it to load? Or can you just send like a Spotify? And maybe it's a playlist of three songs. So for those of you who are like, oh, I sent a Dropbox link with 200 songs. You lost me. I got overwhelmed with option overload, okay? So no attachments. And, you know, it's great if you do have stuff again in the signature, right? So if there's like an EPK that hyperlinks to your website, man, this is all stuff that goes such a long distance. If you actually get someone on the hook, they're looking at your email and now you just need to close the deal. And then lastly, what I will say is please make a note about Disco. So Disco is kind of the industry standard platform that's used by music supervisors and music libraries for music files because it's like how you organize it. It's all the stems from the project, the instrumental, the full version, and then you put in all the metadata. And so it does all this great stuff for you so that, again, you email Crystal. I'm like, oh my gosh, John, I want your song. It's great. Or I want it. I just don't have anything for it right now. So I'm just going to download it into my system, hold on to it, and it's going to have all the information right then and right there. So it's a great platform if you want to, you know, see what it's all about. Let me give you the please don't do this list. Please don't pay other people to pitch your music. Okay, I know there's so many services out there and people who will offer to do this, unless it's someone that works for you don't pay to do this like it's it's really it's not going to work out very well because they don't care as much they probably aren't doing a good job they haven't done their due diligence like all the things that have to be done don't put all your eggs in one basket okay don't be like oh my gosh i'm going to do music licensing and that's it i'm not going to put out music you know on on platforms i'm not going to try to perform i'm not going to sell merchandise like still do all the things for your music career we're working on diversifying your revenue so you can have six, seven figures, you know, eventually and quit your day job. And then also brevity with the emails. Don't send like a huge list of songs. Don't send your stems and instrumentals. Just send the song that you want them to check out. You're just trying to get someone interested. Make sure that you say, hey, you know, I own all the rights to this if you do. And uh, if you need additional versions, I got gotcha. you. And please just don't spam someone. All right. So you're like, I found 10 emails. I'm going to send an email and copy everyone. There are things like that that are just going to kill this for you right away. So now I have done, because I've been doing this for like the last decade, I have done the work to put together lists of the stock music libraries and the pitching libraries, contact information, templates, right? For emails what you need to say, how you need to do this, and just to make it really simple. Because everything I just described, you can 100% do. But there's still additional legwork that takes forever. So I've put all those things together and I'm going to give you guys access to it. I hope you guys found this helpful. This is like one of the most exciting aspects of making music and a great way to really make money. So make sure you subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.